The blockchain may not be moving investment-wise at the speed of AI or the metaverse, but its potential for the future is unmeasurable. In a recent note from the city, uh, they highlight the potential for tokenization via blockchain, and that could have reached nearly $5 trillion in value by 2030. And for more on this, we welcome in Ronit Ghosh, City Head of Future of Finance, City Global Insights. Thank you for joining us here today. So just Broad strokes here. I remember the whole blockchain craze of 2018 or so when anybody who put, uh, appended the name blockchain, uh, if they had a stock ticker instantly, it would go to the moon. But we haven't seen that as much recently. Where is the technology now? Sure. Um, viewers will be rightly skeptical about blockchain. We've been waiting for years. ChatGPT came along at the end of last year and in 15 minutes, probably got as many users as blockchain got in 15 years. We think this is going to change in the next two or three years, and that's what our report is about. Uh, money, token, and games. What we argue in our report is that blockchain is about the transfer of value. Money, assets, similar type of things. And in most parts of the world, including the US, this is regulated. And what's going to change in the coming years is that regulated institutions are getting involved. Big buy side institutions are getting involved in the space. That's one change. And that's going to come out of the US primarily. The second change coming out of Asia is the next generation of games. So fun, social. We're going to see gamers, native gamers coming up with games with Web3 components, blockchain components. Not crypto guys, not crypto bros saying, hey, I want to build a crypto game. This will be taking hit games that exist initially in Korea, Japan, and then the rest of the world, including the US, getting hit games and dropping in tokens. That's what's going to change, we think, in the next couple of years. I mean, we're, we're talking about an opportunity where Inside Partners has forecasted that global blockchain's market size will be worth $227.99 billion by 2028. What is the monetization of that for companies who are putting out public blockchains versus a managed or private blockchain, what does that pathway look like right now? Sure. So let's think about the use cases of blockchain. So in finance, in money, digital securities. So if you're building a public or a permission version, like a private or semi-private version of your blockchain, you've got users now, big institutions saying, hey, can I try out your chain? And that's different to five or seven years ago. And why are they saying it? They're saying it because they want to appeal to a new client base. If you're a P firm or a VC firm, you're probably close to maxed out when it comes to some of the institutional investors, particularly in the US. If you're an endowment fund at a university, yeah, you've heard about this VC thing and this PE thing decades ago. Where they want to target is the retail, but particularly the higher end of retail. You know, you've got a few million dollars in the bank, in savings, but the ticket size of some of these investments are 3 million, 10 million. You're wealthy, but you can't access these products. What tokenization, what blockchain allows you to do is at a lower price, get these alternative asset and in, in alternative investment products out to a range of folks, you know, middle-class folks with six-figure balances, low seven figures, but not like, ultra high net worth individual. And that's what the buy side's focused on. And talk to us about tokenization. That's one of the aspects that I feel is really interesting here. Everything from watches to real estate. And we saw this take off yeah. uh, with the rise of NFTs. Uh, but the timing, of course, yeah. we saw a huge drop off in Bitcoin prices, Ether prices, and uh, the timing was uh, bad. I'm just wondering, where do you see tokenization going from here? And do we see the rise of NFTs once again from the ashes? Sure. So underlying NFTs, the technology of tokenization is really interesting. Obviously, like all innovations, and we can go back to the, like the growth of the railways in the US and the UK, new innovations come with bubbles, hype cycles, speculation, sometimes unfortunately scams. We've seen that with the railways. We've seen that with international trade in the 1600s, 1700s railways in the 19th century, the first dot-com wave. And we've seen that again most recently with the um, some of the more scammy NFT projects. Tokenization is a technology that can be applied to almost anything. In the report, we interviews uh, some folks 
who specialize in fine wines. Um, you know, you want to buy a fine wine, but necessarily you don't want to consume it now, or it could be a fine whiskey. Um, you can tokenize it. You can have the, it's like having the digital asset. You, you have the receipt and say, this is mine. And then you can sell it on. And that wine or whiskey sits in a warehouse somewhere. You never, never see it. Same with art. You say, look, this Picasso is really interesting, but guess what? I don't have 50 or 100 million bucks to blow on a painting. Maybe I can own a fraction of that. And so whether it's art, fine art, wine, any, any collectible watches you could tokenize. Obviously real estate. Rona, you had me at fine whiskey. Look, at the end of the day, I, I just gotta know, for everything that we've been discussing with the blockchain and how this can be layered into the existing financial technology infrastructure, We've already seen a, a hit to some sentiment around the banking runs that have taken place over recent mm -hmm. weeks here. How does the blockchain remove some of the risks that have become known on a management side, but now reassure people in, in how they can bank and how they are engaging with financial services and industry leaders who manage their money? Sure. Um Blockchain is simply a technology and you can use it for good or bad. Now, if you're technologically savvy today, you can self custody assets, financial or otherwise using uh, crypto solutions over time. And, you know, we call this like many analysts web two and a half. What you're going to see is these solutions, these web three solutions merging with web two interfaces. So we can get it out to way more people. Up to recently, the average, say, middle-aged guy like myself hasn't really used these technologies. Obviously, when you get to younger demographics, there's a much higher net level of penetration, knowledge, awareness. You go to a college campus versus you go to a golf course. It's a very different type of knowledge and awareness of these technologies. Um, but what will happen in the next few years is that we're going to see this continuing spread through existing large institutions. So think of the gaming example I used before, saying if you've got a, you know, ex your existing hit game studio game platform, your users know you, you drop in an element of blockchain into that to make the game better. Mm. It'll be the same when it comes to money. Understood. City, heady, uh, city head of future of finance, City Global Insights, Ronit goes. Ronit, you mentioned golf. We're going to have a little bit more golf talk here. So, you know, maybe just stick around or at least keep the Zoom or the Skype feed loaded up. You'll be able to hear some of that. We appreciate this conversation, though, on blockchain here this morning. Appreciate it.